So the way that we take absolute, uh, absolute value brackets away to simplify this is by adding plus or minus to the other side. So we have 1 plus y equals positive or negative c e to the x. However, um, c, the reason, so I know that this is confusing for a lot of people, and it was for me too when I first, um, when I first took calculus, but the reason that we were able to move this e to the c out in front here, just for c, is because um, c is kind of, right now it's sort of an intangible term, it's going to be absorbing um, a lot of factors from this problem, and eventually we're going to solve for it, and it'll be, um, it'll be an exact value. So like, if, um, what we're going to do is go ahead and just take this positive negative away, because if we solve for c and the answer is um, negative 10, um, then, then it's simply negative 10 and that's, that's the exact answer. The positive or negative doesn't have any effect on it, it's, um, it just gets absorbed into the constant. Um, and the, the constant will end up being the correct answer no matter what. So this e to the c here, you know, like e is something like 2.7 whatever. Um, and then you raise it to c, which is a constant like 2 or 3 or 4. This ends up just being a number. So it can get absorbed into c. So can the positive or negative because um, c will come out to what it's supposed to be in the end anyway, whether it's negative 10, positive 10, uh, 2.7, 11, whatever it is. So that's why we can take this whole thing and move it out in front here as C, and that's why we can get rid of the positive negative because it just gets absorbed into this constant here. And you can always do that. So those are two specific steps that you can always remember um, are applicable to C here. So let's go through it. Hopefully it'll become a little bit more clear. Of course, we're going to subtract 1 from both sides so that we get y equals C e to the x minus 1. Um, now that we've solved for um, y, we can go ahead and plug in our um, initial condition, uh, which was uh, y of 0 equals 0, and, um, and solve for c. So we have, we're plugging in 0 for y, and then we have c e, and we're plugging in 0 for x, so 2 to the 0 minus 1. So we, we have to solve for z now, c. Um, anything raised to the 0 power is simply 1, so we have 0 equals c times 1 minus 1, 0 equals c minus 1, so then we add 1 to both sides and we get 1 equals c. So that is how we solve for c, um, and now what we want to do is go ahead and plug uh, 1 back in for c to our original equation. So our, our, our function here is going to end up being y equals, um, we plug in 1 for c, e to the x minus 1, which of course is just going to be um, y equals e to the x minus 1. So that is y equals e to the x minus 1. That is our um, final equation. And now all we need to do, now that we found the equation using calculus, we plug in 1 um, for x here, and, um, and we, we solve for y. So we've got y equals, I'm just bringing this up here so we can see it better, e to the x minus 1. We go ahead and plug in 1 for um, x. So we have y equals e to the 1 minus 1. Um, and I went ahead and did this on my calculator ahead of time, and you actually end up with, um, of course this is just y equals e minus 1, but um, y1 equals 1.718. Uh, there's some more decimal places, but um, so when you actually solve for y of 1, you get 1.718. So those are two methods for solving this equation. The first is um, is computing the point, the approximation of the point with Euler's method. You get 1.44. The second is actually solving it with calculus and plugging in the, the point, and you get 1.718. Those are close enough that I feel comfortable um, that we did both of these steps correctly, 
and we, uh, we don't need to check our work. So these two right here are your final answers. Thanks, guys.